Hey guys, Tarek with Cycle and FPV. It is Friday. I hope everybody's getting ready to have an awesome weekend. Um, whoops. I'm sitting here actually getting ready to do some work on a um, a uh, quad here, and I'll show you my messy bench. I hate. I I really hate doing this, but it's kind of been a mess today. Uh, so I'm working on one of my customers' uh, uh, Diablo uh, M220 V3s, right? And this is part of the. Uh, uh, one of the kits that we put together and a lot of these got purchased by one of the schools locally here so this happens to be one of the students and they were instructed with building it and so forth and there were some mistakes that were made which i needed to come in and repair but right now at this point what i'm working on is setting up the um hglrc f3 v4 and i've put a lot of videos on that particular flight controller and i know that we're there's a lot of flight controllers since then that have come out but um i think that it's still important to kind of go over this stuff especially because it can apply towards other uh, things. For example, I just worked with a customer last night through a remote session uh, to help him set up his HDLRC Zeus. And, uh, and some of the things that we're going to apply here will actually apply to those. So if, you, if you're interested, I mean, just watch this real quickly. Hopefully this will help you out. And what, one of the things I'm going to do is this is really going to pertain to beta flight at this point. Okay. So, and how we're going to set these up, the basic setups. Okay. So um, I'm going to put the computer screen on and I'm going to put my ugly mug right there. All right, so I'm at Betafly right now. Now, one of the things, again, I'm going to go through some simple steps, and I'm going to grab my keyboard here so I can type a little bit, but one of the things that um, I'm noticing people are skipping, and this is not the newest Betafly. This is, uh, I believe that there is, um, what is it, version 4 points. So let me see. Let me open this back up, and I'll tell you, because I always get the message here real quick. Uh, <coughs> so it says that I can get 10.5.1. Well, I don't have that right now. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, what I'm going to do is show you guys how we set this up, right? So look, the simple things that you can do on any flight controller, which I think are very important, right, is you're going to make sure you connect, okay? And when you connect, now this quad is sitting at an angle now because I just moved out of the way. The first thing, and please make sure you do this um, when you do your quad, no matter what brand it is, uh, make sure you go to your CLI and type version because the one thing that I'm noticing still more and more people are doing is they're putting in the wrong firmware when they try to update, all right? And it's starting to break their boards or they're not updating at all. So in this case, make sure you make note of this. And if you have a, a, um, a notepad program, I use something uh, called Sublime. It's a really good one, but if you just wanna use notepad, it's fine. But what I would normally do is I normally try to type my commands out and then um, until I'm used to it, I'll start pasting them in my notepad, right? So I'll put a control V here. And what it tells me, it says that I type the command version and here is the report I got back, right? And this is important because if you save this, then you will have these notes uh, if ever you need to set this board back up or if you need to reference something, all right? So now that we know we're using Spracing F3, now I already did the update here to January 15th, but I'm gonna do it again because I wanna show you guys uh, exactly the steps, all right? So we're gonna click disconnect at this point. And I'm actually just gonna go to a different firmware now. So I'm gonna click firmware flasher. And I'm, I'm gonna keep looking to my right here only because I have a computer here that's letting me know if my computer screen has frozen. Uh, sometimes it will during this file sharing or the screen sharing. All right, so um, you know, you've got a long list of, 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 um, of uh, firmware files here, right? And um, one of the things that you wanna make note of is the fact that sometimes you'll have very close, very similar names. So again, Spracing F3 is what I'm working with, and we know that because in my notes that I copy and pasted, that's what's here. But sometimes you'll have Spracing F3 uh, and you'll have some characters after it. For example, you could have an Evo, Mini, MQ. I mean, there's so many of them, right? So you wanna make sure you pick the right one because it is possible to break your board if you don't or to also get uh, undesired results out of it if you pick the wrong one. So in this case, I'm gonna pick Spracing F3 and um, I'm going to uh, check for the version I want. Now, I usually never jump on the new version. So I'm gonna go with, let's see, I did this one earlier. So I'm gonna go with 3.57, okay? And I'm gonna leave no boot sequence because right now my board's not bricked. I have no problem with that. I am gonna do a full chip erase and the manual baud rate I'm not gonna mess with right now, okay? So I'm gonna click the load firmware button and then I'm gonna click flash firmware. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch and make sure, and sometimes my clicks don't register here, so bear with me a second. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna see it flash right now. Okay. Now look, sometimes when you try to flash firmware, depending on your computer and the driver and everything, you may see it disconnect, but not reconnect the board. And so you may wanna just unplug your USB and plug it back in. And that may work to get your um, back in DFU mode or what have you so that you can flash it, okay? I do have that problem on some of these boards, uh, not just this one, but in some, in some instances on different boards where I'll hear it disconnect. You know, you hear that Windows chime where you disconnect like a USB and it's trying to restart it in bootloader mode 
um, but it never comes back up, meaning your COM port with what you see up here in the top right never fills back up. Just unplug your USB and plug it back in, and you should be able to do the flash firmware. Don't start the whole process again, just click flash firmware again. If it still doesn't work, and you're just like, hey man, I can't connect this thing every time I do it, it goes out, then chances are you have the wrong driver, all right, for your, um, for your uh, board. So just hit me up or go to our website, and if you look here, uh, I'll try to show you this real quickly while we're waiting for this. So if you go here to my website, right, and so if you go to Cyclone FPV, and you go to um, News and Posts and Tutorials, now, I don't have all these things down here. There's a ton of articles, but I'm starting to list them, kind of like this YouTube channel where I've started to list all the, um, uh, what do you call it, um, playlists. So anyways, but for right now, the Drones for Beginners is a great link because it will tell you here, here are your drivers, and it'll start listing for you boards that I know that, I mean, I've documented in the last week that work on these specific drivers. So please, by all means, check that out and make sure you get the right driver. All right, so now it says our programming is successful. Let me maximize this screen. So you see our programming is successful here. So now we're gonna go ahead and click connect, all right? And now you see the quad, right? So here's the step one. Now put this in your notes as well. I'm gonna lay the quad flat and, uh, and uh, I'm just gonna click reset the axis and I want you to do that. And one of the reasons I want you to do is I want you to see if your quad adjusts to being flat. Now this quad is at an angle because of the pads. So the pads are not all level, um, one has been torn. So, um, but if you know your quad's level and you're not seeing this happen, you need to check and make sure your board is mounted properly. Uh, make sure that you can get a level out. You want to try to get your pitch and roll, as long as your board is flat, you want to try to get your pitch and roll as close to zero as possible. Point one is fine, I'm not worried about it. Once we know this works and we calibrate our accelerometer and all that stuff, we want to go ahead and go to ports. And ports is going to be basically where we're setting up our, um, our controller, right? Like, I mean, our receiver. So in this case, I know it's going to be on UART 2. It may be on UART 3. I cannot remember uh, fully which one is on, but if you're on the wrong one, you don't get any response, you can go to the next one. For right now, just for the sake of doing this, I'm going to select 2, and there is no smart audio or anything else here, so I'm going to click Save and Reboot. All right? Now, if you do that and you don't see your transmitter, then go to UART 3, and I think it actually may be 3 in this case, but I'm not sure. All right. So uh, it's done, it says it's ready. So now we're gonna go to configuration. Now here is where I see the biggest problems uh, with what people are doing. I know D-Shot's out there, I know D-Shot 1200, I mean, there's so many of them, right? But for the old school or the old way of doing things, and I'm, I'm not even going old, old school, I'm just going back like maybe two years ago or what have you, a year and a half ago. We still worked in one shot and I still use one shot. I don't care what anybody else says, I like it, it's stable. And for me, I'm 43 years old. These millisecond things that everybody complains about, I don't notice. But one of the things that OneShot does do that um, DShot doesn't do is it allows you to calibrate your ESCs and make sure that the configuration of your ESCs, that the parameters are close enough to where there's not a problem with your ESC. A lot of people forget about doing this and therefore they end up with quads where they say, hey, my motor dips out here or I'm not getting as much power. Well, you need to calibrate them and that's my recommendation and people may argue with me, but I can tell you that I don't put a quad out there where I haven't tested that first to make sure the ESCs are moving properly. Here's how you do it. Make sure you have one shot selected, okay? Now you're in configuration, so in something like this F3V4, we don't have any of these and I'm gonna go ahead and just jump this up to four kilohertz and two kilohertz and I'm gonna leave accelerometer, right? We don't have a barometer or, or a magnetometer, and I am seeing a CPU load of 22%. I wanna to try to keep it around 10, right? Uh, all of these are fine because my board is actually going the right direction. My arming angle is at 25 degrees, and what that means is basically if my quad is beyond 25 degrees at any point, it cannot arm, okay? Unless I tell it to recalibrate the, the accelerometer at that point, right? I like this feature. A lot of people don't because if they get stuck in a tree, they wanna be able to start it. Well, you can if you recalibrate at that point, and I'll tell you about that later, but this is for safety for me. If I'm carrying my quad, let's say, and I mean, we've all done it, I think we've all done it, where it's still on and we've got our transmitter in our hand. If I pick up that quad, I want it to know that it's not level anymore. And therefore, if I accidentally flip the switch, let's just say I lean over and I bump it or something, I don't know, and I trigger it, this is gonna stop it from going ahead and arming and spinning the motors up. Okay, so I never change this, but a lot of pilots, especially the more experienced ones do, there are workarounds though, so you don't have to give this up, like recalibrating your accelerometer once you disarm, okay? So um, I leave this at 25. Now we do know that we're gonna be using SBUS, so I'm gonna drop down to my receiver, select my mode as SBUS, or, uh, sorry, select it as um, my serial-based receiver, and then go to SBUS as my provider, okay? Uh, outside of that, I'm not really gonna mess with too much else, except that 
I'm not really going to use dynamic filtering right now, and that's just my preference because I'm using, I'm getting this with one shot. I do use dynamic filtering when I'm using D-Shot, and there are some parameters within the PIDs that I do adjust for that so that my motors don't heat up. But there's a lot more testing with that that uh, goes into place, and so we'll cover that later, okay? So right now, we're going to leave telemetry up, I guess, for the time being, and we're going to leave anti-gravity just because I don't really feel like changing it. Um, here's something else to show you. Um, for those of you who do not like your beeper going off all the time, right, but you want to use it for fail-safe mode, uh, if you go ahead and click Save and Reboot, right, and we're going to get back to that... Um, if you go to your CLI, I'll just show you something really quick. Instead of having to disable all of them, just type, I think it's beeper dash all. And it just disabled all of them. Now, if I type save, right, instead of having to click, click, click and go, I can go to configuration here. And now all my beepers are turned off. Now you can just pick them up as you want. It's just a quick way to do it, all right? Okay, so um, now the reason, what, what we're doing about one shot in the motors. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my motors. Um, well, actually, no, I'm, I'm done with everything. I've got one shot here. I've got everything else said. Now what I need to do is I need to go to BL Heli, and this is BL Heli S. We're not using BL Heli 32, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, but to do that, I have to power on my quad. So take note of your VTX. Um, on this board, there's a little switch to turn it off, but if you're not using this board and you have a separate VTX, just take note of the fact that we're going to be plugging the LiPo in, and it's going to be on for a little bit. So watch the heat, and if you need to, unplug your VTX for the time being. Here it goes, though. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. I'm going to disconnect from... I'm going to click disconnect here uh, on the... Um, on Betaflight. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the um, quad, and I'm going to actually give you that screen to watch now, all right, even though my desk is messy. All right, so here's the quad, <clears throat> and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to open uh, BL Heli, all right, so it's going to be right here. All right, um, and once this loads up, it takes a little bit to load on my computer here, but we should be okay. All right, so I want to make sure that I match the same COM port, so this is on COM5, so I'm going to go ahead and take this down to COM5, and I'm going to click Read Setup, okay? And at this point, I'm going to get my reading, initial readings of the ESC. And what I want you to do at this point is two things. Since you're in one shot, 125, now I know that I have the proper firmware version here, but just to show you guys what we're doing, we're going to go ahead now and flash the firmware, okay? So go ahead and click Flash, and it's going to go through. You don't have to click the first line. It's automatically selected, so just click OK and click Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And it's going to walk right through, right? And you're going to do that four times, okay? But there's a key here that you have to pay attention to afterwards. <coughs> First one's done. Click OK. It's going to automatically go to the next one. Next one. Click OK again. Follow the same steps. And even if you've flashed these before, um, I mean, unless you have a reason not to, I usually will flash them again if I'm changing boards or if I it's not my quad. And in this case, it's not mine. So I want to make sure that I do the flashing properly if I'm going to give it back to a customer. All right, so I'm going to redo it myself. Click OK. We're on motor 3 now, or ESC 3. And we're going to be going to ESC 4 here in just a second. But the next steps are going to be very important as well. Okay, so let me show you. Okay. All right, off to ESC number 4. All right. Now, one of the things, again, that I would stress to you is if you have flashed it before but you're noticing problems, go ahead and flash it again. I mean, it does not hurt. It's not going to cause any problems, but at least you might be able to see if there's an error with that, okay? So we're good there. So now all the ESCs are flashed to the newest version, 14.9, like they were, all right? And here's where we want to watch out for now. Okay, so we're going to be looking at minimum throttle, which is down here in the bottom right, and maximum throttle in, in the bottom right as well. We're also going to be making sure that the checkbox is right here for programming by TX. And that means that we're basically going to be able to tell the transmitter or beta flight uh, when we start this up, we're going to put our, our throttle in full mode and we're going to calibrate the ESCs that way. And then we're going to get out of it and then the BL Heli is going to read what we have left. So when you're done with this, again, just make sure that you have this done. And just for sake of doing it, click Write Setup. It's, it's going to say it's already written, but we're going to do that anyway, just for uh, memory to keep doing the same things over and over. So click OK. Now we're going to disconnect. <coughs> Sorry, I have a little bit of cold. All right, now, when we disconnect from Betaflight, Right, what our BL Heli. One of the things that I will tell you that I want you to do is to always power off the quad and remove the USB. So in this case, I'm going to flip the power. Okay, quad is now out. Uh, that's like you removing the LiPo. I'm running on a DC converter here, but still. And now I'm going to also remove my USB. I want everything to be power free for just a second, right? Now I'm going to go back to, be, uh, to beta flight, but before I do anything, I'm going to plug my USB in. I'm going to click connect. I'm going to go to my motor stead. Now, I am going to, don't forget, you want to reset your Z-axis and calibrate your accelerometer. 
sorry, accelerometer. And you can see my numbers are almost all zero here. I mean, this degree heading, if I just move this quad just a little bit, it's gonna go uh, to zero, okay? So I, for, for all purposes, this is reading great. Now, I'm gonna go to my motors tab and I'm gonna scroll down here and make sure you don't have any props on, please. And I'm gonna select to arm it and I'm gonna drag the master all the way up. Now we're getting ready to go into calibration mode. At this point, plug in your LiPo and you're gonna hear these tones. Once you hear that stop, drag your master all, drag the master uh, control all the way down. Uh, okay, now you're done. Now you can go ahead and click your, your arm switch off and click disconnect, okay? We're gonna go back, while the LiPo's still on, we're gonna go back to BL Heli and we're gonna connect again. All right, and we're gonna read the setup. Now, what we're looking for here are these numbers, okay? We're minimum throttle and our maximum throttle. And what we're gonna do is gonna compare the two, gonna compare them between each motor, okay? Uh, so we've got number one is 1024 and 2020. Number two, 1024, 10, 2020. Number three, 1020 and 2020. And number four, 1024, 20. So what it tells me is all the ESCs are pretty much in line with each other. I'm not worried about the value right now as much as I am the gap between the values. What we also know is that the minimum throttle has to be uh, the maximum number. So if three are 1020 10, and one is 1024, all three, all four will become 1024. Maximum throttle needs to be the minimum number. So if all three, if three of the four are 2020 and one is 2016, all four become 2016. So in this case, if you look at these motors and you go back over, you have 1024, let's look at the first number, 1024, 1024, 1020, 1024. That means they're all gonna become 1020. Let's look at the bottom number, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. 2020. So there's nothing to change there. So now you can select all your motors, just left click on them and move this down to uh, 1020 and click right setup. And it's gonna adjust three of the four motors. As you can see here, one, two, and four were adjusted. Three was fine, nothing changed. All right, now we have them all configured here and we're gonna go ahead and remove the programming by TX because we no longer, no longer need to calibrate this and we don't wanna do it by accident, okay? So remove that and click right setup again. Sorry, that's my phone buzzing. All right, now at this point, we will disconnect and remember the rule. Once you disconnect, turn off the power, wait for the power down, unplug the USB. Now, go ahead and plug the USB back in. Go over to Betaflight, click connect, and you can see the quad looks good and we can flip on our power now. And we can go to our motors tab and we're gonna go ahead and arm it real quick, no props. And we're just gonna move it slowly. And we're going to see if all these numbers, if everything seems to sync properly and just listen to it. It sounds clean. They're moving clean. There's no problem. So, so far we're looking good. Now, the next thing we want to do just for the heck of it is make sure you move each toggle one at a time and test the direction it's going. So slide one up and make sure one turns clockwise. And you can just do that by putting your finger on the motor and feeling it. So close it off. Go to two, make sure two spins and make sure it turns counterclockwise. If it does turn it off. Go to three. Make sure three turns counterclockwise and spins, and it sounds clean too. Turn it off and go to four and do the same thing. It turns clockwise and it sounds good and it spins, so we're fine. So everything is mapped properly and they're spinning the right direction, so we're set, okay? So now we're gonna disarm again, and now we really don't have any need to have our um, a LiPo plugged anymore, so we can turn that off. All right, so our configuration is set for one shot 125, and at this point, I would leave everything like it is until you get some practice flight in on it. Now. Going down, you'll set your receiver, and in most cases, you're gonna end up going to TAER, which is gonna be the third option. And understand that this low threshold here, I don't like it at 1050, because you should be checking your transmitter to make sure that you're at 1000, right? Um, if you're higher than that, it, it kind of bothers me. I'm, I usually keep mine at 1005, and I usually put this at 2000, okay? Um, and that's just for this to tell it where my stick is gonna be when it reaches its maximum and its minimum. That five leeway means that I need to be below 1,005 on value. And I'll show you what that means later. But basically, if you turn on your quad and you turn on your receiver and you have it plugged in beta flight, when your throttle is all the way down, this number needs to read between 1,000 and 1,004. If it reads above 1,005, you won't be able to arm your quad. I think 1,050 is just too much and you need to calibrate your transmitter at that point, all right? Um, as far as modes go and everything else, I'm not gonna really go over those right now because I don't have a transmitter set up for this, but I will come to it in another uh, video. My main thing right now is to make sure that you guys um, 
uh, sorry, that you guys start doing the calibration and go back to the old way of doing it so that you can see your ESC and see if you see any problems with the numbers. After that, after you test flight, if you want to go to D-Shot, if your board supports it, go for it. But there are other settings that we need to adjust then. But the main thing is start with the basics and make sure your quad flies straight. Make sure it doesn't start going anywhere. Make sure that your motors have been calibrated so that they're giving power evenly. All right, that's something I saw last night and something again I saw this morning when I was working on this one. So I just figured I'd put this quick video out on there. All right, guys, if you need anything else, it's a 20 minute video. I tried to cut it as short as possible. If you need anything else, hit me up. If not, have some safe flying this weekend, guys, and uh, be blessed and uh, take care of each other. Talk to you later. Bye.